exchange. So the Fed has left rates unchanged as anticipated, back to back pauses. We're going to hear from Chair Jay Powell shortly. That'll be at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. In the meantime, let's talk about some of the implications and what we should be watching. Michael Green, Portfolio Manager, Chief Strategist at Simplify Asset Management. Thank you for being with us. Uh, just was having an extensive conversation with Andrew Brunner really about Janet Yellen and some of the moves that the uh, Treasury Department did and did not do. Um, but let's just start with the big picture. What do you think the Fed has on its mind in saying, let's leave those rates alone? Well, I think that they're very concerned about the potential implications of, of being blamed for a recession after having been blamed for the inflation. And so they're towing the line between um, being overly aggressive at this point as they're seeing the economy weakening. We saw the uh, ISM data come in today on the manufacturing side, um, significantly weak, particularly in the new orders area. Um, and at the same time, they can't actually proclaim uh, victory over inflation because we have not seen the core numbers that they've guided us to. Those not yet have retreated to the 2% level that they're looking for. It leaves a difficult position where I think Powell is going to have to be super hawkish. Um, he ultimately has to come through and say, yes, we did not hike rates, but we absolutely are going to consider it next time. And I think one of the key risks actually is, is that the market has priced all of that out. Going into this meeting, the market had basically a 0% probability of a hike. Right. That's actually not what the Fed wants to see. The Fed wants to see the market continuing to think that the Fed is going to be relatively serious and potentially being more aggressive. I think the real challenge at this point, though, is that if we look at how strong the economy has been, at least supposedly with that 4.9% GDP print, today seeing stronger job opening numbers coming out of jolt, and yet at the same time we've seen an extraordinary retreat in inflation metrics, despite the fact that the construction of the metrics that the Fed is using are very lagging in nature. So if we use current metrics on housing or shelter, for example, to reflect the fact that rentals are now actually printing negative on a year over year basis, I would suggest that we're actually below 2% already. And now it becomes an interesting question of how quickly are they gonna cut? So I actually agree with your former guest that the odds of much stronger cuts are much more rapid and, and uh, deeper cuts than are expected are gonna hit us next year. Yeah, he said four cuts. Um, they begin in um, June of 2024 and he saw four cuts coming. Um, that being said, when you, when you think about what the Fed made, I mean, they have a December meeting, a January meeting. To your point, it was basically nearly 100 percent likely that the Fed would stay unchanged today. And, um, you know, we're above 70 percent for the next meeting. So they're done and then the cuts come. What do you what do you think that um, and the Fed needs to stay hawkish, to your point? What do you think um, as yep. far as um, running off the balance sheet or any other tools that the Fed may be using or looking to? Is, is that important or not so much right now? Well, I think, as again, as the prior guest alluded to, we've been running at a slight re reduced level because we've not seen more mortgages refinance or re be retired due to you know low levels of existing home sales in the manner that they would have had to. The Americans that have 2.75 or 3% mortgages are quite happy with them. They see very little reason to change. The, the interesting part is we're starting to see inventory begin to rise in the housing market. We're starting to see some measures of job loss begin to turn up. A lot of the data that we receive on the economy is actually not really accurate about things like wages because it excludes the high end, work, which is really where the pressure has largely been occurring. Um, and so, you know, the risk is, is that things are significantly weaker than the Fed actually thinks or the headline data would suggest. That's certainly what's showing up in business surveys and sentiment data, et cetera. It's just we're at a, a really confusing environment in terms of where the actual fundamental data is. And again, if, if you look at that component, the Fed has to recognize that real interest rates as reflected in things like tips, et cetera, are at levels that are consistent with the global financial crisis. You know, that suggests that they are very restrictive and ultimately that we would expect to see the economy begin to slow markedly. One of the real challenges that we have is the tools that we use for monitoring this stuff is all based on prior cycles. And so we've just never encountered a modern cycle in which the risk is largely created by the Fed hiking rates. 
So at this point now, I'd love to hear what you would advise to folks as far as how to navigate through this. Because um, to your point, maybe we'll see some slowing. This is a difficult market. Um, you know, has the bond market finally believed what where we are in this high for longer type of environment? Um, what's your advice to folks? Well, the way I'm positioning my portfolios and ultimately what I think we need to be prepared for is an increasing number of institutional investors are starting to have very serious conversations around can they achieve their objectives without using equities, reducing exposure to private equity, reducing exposure to equities in the form of U.S. public equities or even uh, equities on a global basis because they can now get really attractive returns out of the fixed income sector. We've seen the impact of an increase in supply, but what we haven't yet seen is the impact of an increase in demand, and more importantly, demand that is sourced from the selling of equities. Um, my portfolio is I'm, I'm encouraging people to listen to the Fed. The Fed is saying we're in restrictive territory. We know they can't stay there. And as a result, fixed income actually represents a pretty attractive investment opportunity for many investors. And I would encourage people to think about moving ahead of where the slower two of institutions are going to do that. As we look at the first quarter, second quarter of next year, those investment committee meetings that are required, the change in objectives, the general agreement, it's all a very slow moving process. But once it starts, it's going to continue. All right. Thank you so much, Michael Green. Great to speak with you. Simplify Asset Management. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Michael. Really appreciate it. Yeah.